the pirate! Take him pay! Look, I've got, I've got treasure buried all over this island, and, uh, and rum. Any you lads old enough to drink rum? There's only one thing we want from you. To make you pay for what happened to Pan. I... Well, let's get on with it, then. I've got somebody waiting for me at home. Now, look, I don't want to hurt any of you, so this is your last chance. Should really be more careful, Captain. Last boys have gotten nasty since Pan died. Tiger Lily. Didn't expect to ever see you back on this rock. Neither did I. This isn't exactly what you call a planned excursion. I suppose thanks are in order for the daring rescue. Right. Who said this was a rescue? So I really like this scene because this is essentially what I'm used to with sneak peeks for Once Upon a Time since I started to review the show. You know, we get a fun feel for the episode. We get a new character possibly, though, I have to say in season six with its peaks and valleys writing. Do we really need a new character at this point? Because, you know, we have so many other uh, older new characters, such as Lily, that um, have yet to be properly developed or get closure to their storyline. But I really just enjoyed what this scene did. It kind of closed off one problem, which was Hook evading the Lost Boys, and introduced a new character being Tiger Lily. And, you know, there's a whole backstory that needs to be unfolded between her and Captain Hook because she blatantly said, who said this was a rescue? And then stabs him with the dart and knocks him out. And, you know, then it ends. And I have to say, it's perfect. Like, it's a nice little tease to the episode. I thought this first sneak peek where it, you know, was giving us the, um, the fact that Snow White and Prince Charming are in danger of never waking up from their curse. That was a great tease for the episode. So it's really good. I like when sneak peeks can tease me and can you know, make me really want Sunday to come even faster. Because I hate to say it, as much as I like watching the show on Sundays, Sunday night is not the best night of the week because the next day is Monday. So I really do like the fact that the sneak peeks, both of them, have been engaging and have given us characters that I think 99% of the fan base really, really like. Plus, Colin O'Donoghue is just so charismatic in his performance. I love how he's like, there's treasure on the island and there's rum. You guys old enough to drink rum? It's fun. He's a fun actor. He's into the scenes. And I just think overall, it's a really enjoyable sneak peek to watch. Now, am I going to like the entire episode? I don't know. But from just the two scenes that I've watched, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's a lot different analyzing, you know, one individual scene to a whole 42-minute episode because, you know, as you get into the longer span of time, you can see some, some weird discrepancies and just some weird writing and whatnot, which is kind of what, you know, the episode before had. So I would say just overall, the sneak peek was really fun, and it also introduced Sarah, I, had, I want to make sure I say her last name, Tomko. And Sarah Tomko, I pulled up her IMDb. She hasn't been in a lot of, you know, mainstream um, media or television or movies or anything, so this is a really good chance for her to get exposure to a really welcoming fan base and to, you know, just a big fan base in general and to really get exposure to, you know, the American audience. I mean, ABC is one of the biggest... Um, networks to be on and it really just helps develop people's careers i it um great examples are of both elizabeth lale and georgina Hegg, relatively no-name actress elizabeth bill is a completely no-name actress or was completely a no-name actress she had no acting experience except for like a couple you know um school projects and then she got a gig as anna on once upon a time and then everyone knows about her and we're talking about her three years later so, you know, Sarah Tomko, unfortunately, is playing Tiger Lily, who isn't, like, the most mainstream of characters. If she was uh, getting, you know, Princess Jasmine or Pocahontas, that would have been um, a little bit different because Pocahontas is uh, really big in the Disney company. 
But at the same time, she's playing a relatively well-known character, particularly those who are fans of the Peter Pan fairy tale or the Peter Pan movie. So it's good. It's good exposure for her um, professionally. So I also like that as well because now the show or the marketing department is you know, helping promote this actress as well and make her career hopefully go off. I, I do hope the best for her performance, and I hope that it is really well done. If she is as good as she was in this particular scene, I I'll be very impressed. If it goes downhill, eh, you know, whatever. That'll just make the episode a little bit more annoying. But once upon a time, I've said it many, many times, minus Greg German, and um, minus, I believe it was Andrew... I forget his name, who played Hercules Minus. Um, whoever they cast as Hercules, who I didn't think was that good, has really, really, really good casting. Again, Georgina Hag, Elizabeth Mitchell, um, Elizabeth Lale, always, you know, they, they were really, really good. And I, I think that Sarah Tomko is going to be in the category of good as opposed to the category of annoying, such as Greg Germain. So uh, last thing I want to quickly quickly talk about is the way Neverland is set up. Now, Neverland, as we all know, was about a 10 to 11 episode arc. And when we were in Neverland, we were in a very, very dark environment. It was a really annoying, uh, excuse me, it was really annoying for me to watch because, you know, it, it's just dark. And like, I have, a light, have all the lights on in order to properly, you know, get the feel of what was going on in the episode. And, you know, I have the still down here of what we were really used to for the Neverland arc. But... It's interesting here that Neverland is in the light of day. Now, what I was thinking about, because I, I went through a couple episodes really quick before I did this review, was it had to have been Peter Pan and the Shadow combined that made Neverland go into an eternal night. Because when Peter Pan first became Peter Pan, or when Malcolm first became Peter Pan, the island was light. The scene that I have, the uh, still, excuse me, that I have below, Neverland was completely, you know, in a, in a daylight cycle. It would have night and day. So clearly, whatever Peter Pan did with the shadow caused the island to be um, submerged in darkness. So I was, I would like to see, and though I really don't think it'll ever happen because I don't, I don't think the showrunners care about it. But I would like, like to at least get like a line saying, like what, like how Malcolm really destroyed Neverland. Again, it will never happen. But I was just really curious, and I wanted to point it out because clearly Neverland is back in, you know. A cycle of night and day and the lost boys are you know kind of angry at hook but they should be angry at the whole group but you know hook's the only one they could get at right now but anyway i thought it was really interesting that without pan there the the island is essentially able to live and breathe again but i guess there's no magic on the island so the island is um just an island anyway i would say overall the scene is fun it's enjoyable i really enjoy colin Dunny's, excuse me i really enjoyed colin O'Dunny's performance as i always do sarah tomko I'm liking so far. I'm looking forward to seeing more her more of her in the episode. I'm curious to see where Tiger Lily is going to go. I know that she is not a love interest for Hook, which is always a good thing. I think we are kind of done with you know love triangles and one up, and the, the whole Lost Boy storyline is essentially done as well. There was really no storyline. It was just a little um, you know problem for Hook to deal with and to, a good way to introduce us to Tiger Lily. So anyway, thank you for watching my review. It's a good scene. I will be checking out the episode Awake on Sunday, and I'll be doing the review around 9, 9.30 with you guys live. So share your thoughts in the comments below, and thank you for watching. See ya!